There we go. Hello. Can you guys hear me all right now? My mic wasn't working there for a second. All righty. Tell you with these audio problems. Perfect. Um, we are just waiting a moment because uh, Refrigerator is going to join us. Before we get started, he's just restarting as he had some technical difficulties. But uh, what we will be doing today is finishing up our cast uh, with week four, tier one of Crimea Reaver versus the Fighting Irish. Irish? Irish? I, don't, I still am not quite sure how to pronounce that. We have one series left, which is a PvP. Uh, Nocklar versus I am so cool. I am so cool. I think it should be I am so cool. I think that's a that would make sense to me. Hey. Hi, Fridge. Can you hear me? That didn't seem to fix that. Ah, he's yeah. He's having audio problems. He he can't hear me, guys. No. Oh. I'm not quite sure. Let me just message him real fast. Working fine a couple days ago. Yeah, fridge is pretty quiet. I'll turn him up. Okay, Fridge says he can hear me now. Perfect. So, okay. Uh, does this echo at all, or no? I don't hear any echo at all. Okay, that okay. That's good. Okay, I turned okay, you Discord up, is... so I think you should be good now. Hopefully, hopefully, everybody on the stream can hear you all right. There's no echo, I don't believe, on our end. I don't hear any echo myself. Okay, that that'd be good. Yeah, just uh. If anyone in chat just lets us all know, because I, uh, I, like, I kind of moved where I was at my laptop, so. Yeah, it's all good. You, I think you sound pretty good, Fridge, so uh, I have hosted the game whenever you'd like to join it, and then uh, we can start talking about one matchup I know very little to nothing about, which is why I'm really happy that you're able to join us for this. Uh, uh PvP. yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know this matchup any more than you do, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. But I, I am a Protoss player, so I guess I'll I'm do sure the best it's I a can, little but... bit better than me, honestly. You know, it's we'll 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 figure it out. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's PvP. It's not like we're gonna be in these games for two hours or something, like Terran versus Terran or something. Should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, it take too long in that respect. Yeah, I mean, PVPs can either be super long or super short. So, uh, but usually they're usually pretty short. Okay. I think I'm in. Perfect. Yeah, that, that's me. <laughs> yeah, I figured. <laughs> Kitchen appliance. <laughs> very, uh, very typical there. Um, uh-huh. Nice name, Refrigerator. Let me pause this and uh, get over to the right overlay. I'm still pretty new at this, so... But I have the... Right. I have uh, added the scores to the game screen as well, so... Um, I think we are awesome. all set, so... Really good. Alrighty. Um, Alright, well, let's just jump right into it. So we have uh, Naklar versus I Am So Cool. Uh, PvP... Refrigerator's favorite matchup, I hear. And, um, Fridge, why don't you jump in and do the introductions? Okay. Uh, we'll start in the top left with... Wait, did you have red versus blue on, or...? Uh, I don't, but I can turn oh. it on. Okay, well, I, I, either way. We have in our top left one of the Protosses they're going to be facing... Or one, one of the Protosses we're going to be seeing. We have... Naklar, and then in the top right, our other Protoss is I am Sekul. Perfect. Um, I think I am going to turn red versus blue on, because their colors are so similar. Uh, 
uh, yeah. kind of a, a you know, I, I generally like to keep the colors that the players choose, but when they are both choosing gray, <laughs> I think I think we'll we'll make it easier for the viewers and uh, we'll just do red versus blue. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a little bit easier on my own eyes too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, we have had a pretty uh, interesting series between these two teams for. Uh, tier one, um, a lot of really you know tenacious play between some of the Zergs and Terrans specifically. Uh, so we're already seeing a pretty much the same exact build coming out of both players. How do you like the open yeah. PvP bridge? I am recently I've been working on doing one gate core which is like the more like the most standard of pvp but i used to do a lot of two gate openers as uh i think it was either quark or bonneth someone at one of the like the starcraft lands like they kind of showcased the build where you get like three zealots and you use those three zealots to try to push in and get pro kills and get scouting intel but instead of it being like follow-up zealots you just get a gas behind it so you can get goons and you can get range and follow up with like robo and stuff so it's kind of like a normal pvp it's just that you have three extra zealots uh, in it so yeah um, i mean that's but, that's definitely interesting uh, it looks like naklar is trying to potentially pile and block um the mineral line of i am so cool um now I've got a question for you as a non-Protoss player. So, in TBT, in a lot of respects, uh, whoever can get the factory down, and in some ways, whoever gets the gas down quicker, is usually in an advantageous, uh, ad advantageous position. Is that similar in PvP? I did see that Naklar had his gas slightly faster. Um, than uh... so cool. I, at least for me, because like I don't understand PvP as much as I would the other two matchups. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, for me, it doesn't feel like it makes the biggest difference. I mean, you will have gas a bit sooner than your opponent. I mean, it can be a big difference that can snowball if you are, if you remain, like, I guess, unoptimized in some respect. Like, like that earlier gas could mean that Naklar ends up getting an extra goon out, and that extra goon could snowball in a fight, and that could lead to I'm so cool potentially losing if we get like an early goon on goon uh, fight going. Yeah. But for the most part, I'd say like you can kind of it, it it won't make too big of a difference. So I think we should be fine here. And but it looks like yeah they're both going for range. It looks like I'm Sackles is slightly faster, and unfortunately, they have more probes on gas. Yeah, I noticed that as well. So I'm so cool has had four probes on gas. Unfor it's an unfortunate error that happens sometimes, but it's been that way for basically since the gas was made. So he is going to be slightly mineral starved um, compared Wait, to it's just Clark. Like the probe being like it's not even moving, so it's it's yeah. not mine. It's just stuck in there. <laughs> So that's kind of unfortunate, but you know that that does happen. Um, it's just something you kind of have to take care to uh, so watch we, for. But the interesting yeah. thing that we're seeing is Naklor is going gone for the Robo follow up, whereas I'm so cool has decided to go for a three gate goon. So yeah, as far absolutely. as my it's very interesting. Yeah, as far as my understanding, three gate goon usually is perfect to someone that's opened with a robo because you'll have you'll simply have a greater uh, goon advantage but i mean we'll see if uh i'm so cool decides to try to press this advantage or maybe contain or something like that yeah he you know he he there's definitely uh some differences in their build here um you know we have the support bay coming out from naklar he's gonna try to defend with you know the the more powerful but also um, more difficult unit at a lot of times to control with with the reaver yeah. whereas i'm so cool he's clearly cut probes he's gone up to three gates and a forge um and he's really still cutting probes as well as having that one probe not mining for this entire time i think he's really going to be on the back foot here if he doesn't catch that reaver uh, kind of out in the open. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree. This, uh, the pro cut here is actually pretty bad. Now that we're down, like, what is that now? Like, eight workers? This is... Well, you know, you kind of have to try to either bust up this ramp and do some damage before the Reaver comes out, or we really need to, like, maybe just expand or something. Like, honestly, I don't know. It's it's hard given that we're down this many probes already. Yeah. Um, even I'm... though Naklar is on one base, like, 27 probes, that's perfectly fine. You're going to have a Reaver. You can push down into your Nat soon to try to take your expand, so... It's interesting to me that he's... Oh, he's got to be careful with this Reaver. Wow, that was a crazy hit. Oh, that was a... That was a big hit, yeah. Um, he is going for two Reavers before Shuttle as well, um, which I find pretty interesting. But, you know, he doesn't necessarily know that he has the probe advantage, um, so he may feel pressed to push out of his base like this. But he would actually be totally fine to just sit behind those two Reavers and, uh, you know, continue to, to build up and, and, you know, mine as many minerals as he can. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he could he could build up his forces a little bit and then attempt to take his natural a little bit later when he has a shuttle. But yeah, seeing how these Reaver Scarab shots have been, it looks like I'm is just going to push or pull back from this contain. Um, if Oh, actually, no, it look, looks like they're going back in. They just wanted to reinforce with the extra goons, and they're taking a nexus of their own. And I'm glad that they're having the second Nexus down, because hopefully when they do start to resume pro production again, this will give them a way to catch back up in the work account. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, they're very, I think I Am So Cool is very lucky that Naklar has not made perfect pro production. Um, he's been doing very well, but, you know, that's helped him to not stay too horribly far behind. But at this point... Oh, those, those big scarab shots by yeah, the Yeah, big scarab shots. He's got two of them going. He takes a lot of damage on that shuttle, so he needs to be very careful with it. But this will allow him to yeah, push that's... out and push away from this contain. Yeah, so here's the the thing that's going to be really tricky now is whether Naklar is going to decide to be aggressive. Okay, well, it looks like they're actually going to push out now, so... I was going to say whether they decide to take their natural immediately and then push out, or I guess just push out and try to see what I have Sequel has and to see whether they can kill them or not. And it looks like considering that they have the two Reavers now, they I think they should be able to do a lot of... They could trade pretty well here. Yeah, they lose the oh, shuttle the though, shuttle. and they're on top of the Reavers. One Reaver falls, but... You know, the other Reaver will luckily clean up. Oh, and I'm so cool. Wow, Instantly yeah, leaves lost with no GG. Well, that is that yeah, is that a, is, the end. That is a quick GG. Well, quick uh, quick end to that game. A little bit um, a little bit too fast, in my opinion. Yeah, it's kind of rough uh, PvP. Like you, you have to decide whether you want to go for like sniping the shuttle or the reavers but sometimes it doesn't that doesn't really pan out for you so yeah you know it's just one of those things too where you know they don't necessarily have all the information that we have and losing all your goons knowing that there's still reavers outside your base knowing you've probably cut probes to get to the position that you're in i i mean i can understand it i like to see players um kind of hold out a little bit longer and see if they can fight back kind of like we saw in that last series between uh, Martin B and Launch um but you know I can understand I mean sometimes it's very difficult to know where you're at in a position so um yeah I, I can agree with that mentality though you know you gotta make your opponent work for it you know like in that in that other game you know, Martin really made them work for it, and in the end, it actually, you know, it turned things around. But I mean, sometimes it feels like, you know, in these games, it feels like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to waste either of our time. But like, you know, you, you have to try. I think sometimes you gotta try, even if it, it's it's very obvious. Sometimes I think you kind of gotta at least try. Maybe use it to think about what the next game is gonna look like. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, you know, you, you don't. I don't ever want to, at least as a player, I don't ever want to give up easy wins where I feel like I still had the opportunity uh, to, to fight back and, and push against my opponent a little bit. Um, but that can be difficult for some people as well. Uh, 
Brood War is definitely a very frustrating game. And um, I'm just checking one thing because I think the players had named the replays wrong. So hopefully this is the actual second game. <laughs> we'll, we'll jump into it and see. All right, I hope so too. I don't want this to potentially spoil. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, I didn't follow what the games were called since they were in the wrong order, actually, so I'm not sure. Yeah, as long as the maps were in the right order for the week, yeah, then yeah. I think we should be in okay spot. I think so. So, um, all right, let me jump back over to this screen. Perfect. And we will start the game. Um, now, I do see that they chose, they have chosen, uh, uh, colors that aren't quite as similar. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, these are a lot better to distinguish between. Absolutely. So I will leave it as the player's choice. Um, so in the bottom left, we have, uh, I Am So Cool. Kind of a quick, quick game there from him. You know, I think he had a strong opening. He, he fumbled a little bit with his control and uh, got out of that game real fast. In the bottom right, we have Naklar, um, who clearly had a plan. He kept to it and didn't really deviate in any way. I, I would actually say maybe there was a deviation of building two Reavers before Shuttle, but we do not know. Um, you know, it, that would be the only deviation I would see that maybe happened during that game. So. How? Yeah, yeah. I think this is a difficult I mean, map with no ramp for PvP. Oh yeah, this yeah rampless maps in PvP. I mean, it it plays definitely a bit differently because of how strong three gate goon is and how strong like DT is because DT will counter three gate goon. So you know, without the presence of a ramp to help you like give you that defender's advantage without that high ground. Uh, you know, three gate goon builds are just that much deadlier. So if you decide to open like gate robo gate or something like that, they could overwhelm you at your you know at your choke point if they have way more goons than you than you were expecting. Um, and I think part of it is like the thing is you have to. It's hard because scouting and, and PVP is can be so easily denied by that first dragoon coming out and picking off that first probe. So that makes like that's why that matchup is such a rock paper scissors matchup. So we're gonna have to see whether, you know, both of these players are able to get good scouting intel. Yeah, absolutely. They're both scouting in the in the wrong direction, but uh, in some ways, I think that's a good thing for Naklar as he is going for two gate zealot um, pressure versus the one gate uh, core build from I Am So Cool. Um, so we're seeing a deviation right away. Yeah, that's right. This time around, it's not four probes on gas for Nicole, or for I am Sequel, so that's at least a good thing for us going for us there. And he, yeah, he we're is getting slightly the gas. Uh, pylon blocked though, but supply block for a little while there. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's rough. I run into that kind of supply block sometimes too. It it just sometimes you just like you beat yourself over it. It's like, man, why did I do that? Like, God, I fucking suck. Yeah, um, I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I know the supply depot didn't make feeling plenty. Oh, uh, the probe can it get into the base. It scouts these three zealots. So, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. So, yeah, I am that cool. Should know that this is some sort of two gate. I mean, aside from like obviously scouting with the probe, uh, Naklar's gone for that build that I like to do a lot on ladder, which is that three zealot, and then they take a twenty one gas. As yeah, well as get their core behind. It's interesting as and, well because he built the shield battery as a perfect defense for this, and then canceled it. Uh, I am so cool. Um, I wonder what made him cancel the shield battery there because he had it built, he had it started. You know, it was halfway done, and now yeah, he's in a tough position. Too. Loses the probe right away. The zealots are microing well. Uh, they're going right for that mineral line. A couple of missed shots on those zealots. Hopefully he can miner so walk. There's oh, he gets one of the probes. It's one probe, he loses his zealot. Two probes have gone down. One goon is not joining the fight, but... 
you save this probe? No, that's a third one that goes down. And he still has the scouting one alive in uh, Naklar's base. But given the damage, I mean, this isn't this is not the greatest because we're now four down or four probes down compared to Naklar. But we will have a goon range advantage. And if we can use these two goons and the Zot to press and potentially maybe even get a really good favorable trade like by picking off one or two of the goons, we could find a way to get back into this despite having lost those probes. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean it you know, Naklar is gonna have defender's advantage, but you're right that he is gonna not have range. So as long as we see really healthy micro out of I am so cool. He can definitely put himself in a good spot here. Um, I gotta say though, the car is microing really gone. well, uh, yeah. and this is a tough spot to to enter somebody's base. Ooh, that's a lot of shots. But yeah, I mean, no significant hold damage just yet for really either player's goons. But ooh, nice targeting. Three right goons versus three goons, goons three. now. Uh, while one player has range. That range upgrade is still spinning, so it's still going to take a while. The second gate is not producing more goons. Oh, we're actually getting a DT follow-up from I'm So Cool, so that's actually really interesting. Uh, this is also one of those things that I see like that happens a lot on like Tasteless Stream, is that you get people that go into range goons first, but then, you know, if you're not careful counting the amount of goons that they've made and figuring that out, that you, don't, you won't know that they've made DTs behind this. Um, but luckily for us, or for Naklar, they're getting their robo behind this. I'm not sure if this will time out quickly enough to block the DTs. But, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. Right now, this seems like, you know, if I, I'm so cool can get away with this, this looks like it would be their win. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, now that they've pulled all the way back to their base, um, the goon advantage is no longer there because they have the Fender's advantage. Uh, they've got to hold a little while before these DTs start to come out. But I do think they're going to be able to get a little bit of damage done if they run these DTs directly to Naklar's base. Yeah, I... The Observer might show up in time because the Observatory builds pretty quickly, but these DTs could also, like, well, they're not moving just yet, but... For sure, they can definitely either help to break this contain or get some economic damage back do uh, done back at Naklar's base. Because right now, they are taking a second Nexus, and we are very delayed. Yeah, um, and, and Naklar, I think he might have spotted the DTs. Yeah, it looks it's like he spotted it. He's trying to... It looks like he's kind of... He kind of hesitated about where he wanted to go, or maybe he was trying to body block the DTs. But that first one is coming in. And the Observer is still halfway done. It was only halfway done. He's yep. blocked the choke, though, so... He, he has blocked the choke, uh, which is going to buy him enough time, I think, for the Observer to come out. Uh, he will lose a, a goon for his trouble. Um, oh, the goon doesn't even go down. Really great control. Wow, absolutely countered. Uh, oh, unfortunate. The DT doesn't isn't able to get too much done. And the other is swiping at the Nexus, but is also probably going to go down. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this is a very tough position, I feel, for I Am So Cool to be in. Um, you know, he's built three DTs now that have done zero damage. Um, he is taking his expansion behind this. Huh. Oh, I'm... and the, as soon as the 13 DT died, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that is very unfortunate. I gotta, I'm gonna have to ask these players why they name their games. Uh, in the wrong order. I wonder if they played them in the wrong order. Uh, I think that's just the way the CPO web app is. I think it's like bugged or something right now. So like, there's some, there's plenty of games that are like because they're aimed in the wrong one. Yeah, there is a third game. So I mean, I I feel obligated to to watch that game as well. Uh, yeah, I, I want to see that. Uh, that's unfortunate that this game uh, kind of did spoil the result before we can get like. You know, that, that feeling that it was a true series, so... Yeah, it might have just been as Nublime was saying, you know, maybe the web app named him in a funky way. Um, I will definitely make sure to check what the math pool is next time. Um, so, maybe I maybe it's my mistake. It's very possible. 
I basically don't know what I'm doing anyway, so... <laughs> well, so. I mean... You know, first time caster and everything. There's no fault there. Yep, absolutely. So we'll jump right into this game. Um, I must have had him in the wrong order or something. Or maybe I mean, I said that like, and... as if I was an experienced caster, but this is also like my second time. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, you know, it's great to have you, though. So... Um... Either way, we'll go yeah. over this game as well. Why not? We're here. Okay, hold on. Before we even, like, forget the introductions, we got something interesting, because a probe already got pulled from I Am Sackle's main mineral line, which means we are going to get a proxy gate of some sort, likely a proxy 99. This is going to be... We have fireworks going, this game. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, it's interesting... Um... I'm gonna have to look up which which order these were actually played in because I'm curious to see if this was the first game or the second game and how that might have played um, for every, you know for how the rest of the games went. He is proxying it looks like in the natural expansion, and I gotta tell you I feel like every Protoss I hit on the ladder as a Terran player tries to proxy Gateway right here in this spot versus me. <laughs> I yeah uh, I I wouldn't be surprised that that was the case. I think Protosses have gone a lot bolder about their proxy gating because they've found better ways to just simply recover. Like if they can find enough damage, they can still recover and go back to like a normal-ish game, which is it's kind of funny to me. Like because I don't, I mean you know don't tell any of my opponents this, but I don't really proxy gate too much. So you know it's like I don't have enough experience to tell you like what you know the ins and outs of proxy gating are you know I i'm an honorable protoss player so yeah you oh know, I, that's... oh wow proxy two gate actually versus two gate for naklar so yeah, this is very that's... interesting to see how this will play out um i do happen to know that about your fridge that you are not a proxy gate player uh i gotta say i think you're probably the person i have played against the most out of the entire foreign uh scene and I don't think you've ever proxy gated me more than one time, I think, is all I can recall. All, all I could say is that if I tried to do it against you, I'm not sure if it would really work, because my zealot control can be pretty awful. But but the focus here is that Naklar actually ended up, like, I, I find it interesting that they decided to two gate on both rampless maps that we've seen so far. And like, I mean, I have to say, this is probably like either a really great read from Naklar, or they just... Like, they just didn't want to die to, like, they just didn't want to die to proxy gate like any Protoss does on ladder. So, the fact that they went 2 gate against this, this is going to be really kind of rough for I'm so cool, and it's going to come down to the Zealot control. Um, and he does trap can... one, uh, one pro with this pylon, and yeah. has Naklar not scouted that, uh, yeah, he did not see the two gates in his natural. So he's sending his That's zealots so out, I... and he's going to lose the pylon. Okay. If yeah. this pylon goes down, it is over uh, for Yeah, he sent Naklar. those two zealots out to try to attack I'm so cool, but right now the threat is the zealots that are inside his base already. And I mean, these probes are doing good damage, but there goes one, there goes another one, and this zealot too is going to oh, go down. This is the zealot and their shield batteries. Now, this is the kind of Protoss player I'm familiar with, uh, building oh, pylons and pylon. shield batteries in my base now the gateways are unpowered so as long as he doesn't lose any of his probes or too many of his probes there really is no way for uh naklar to come back from this oh wait why aren't we targeting probes or i mean i guess we could target down the pylon and try to keep supply blocking them permanently but i i, I would like to go after some of the probes we even rebuilt the pylon to power the battery yeah um, Although the battery is kind of overkill at this point since there are like no more zealots being made. And the entire probe line of Ainsa Cool got nearly wiped out in the meantime. So yeah. right now he has to do this with whatever money he's got left and whatever results he has right now. He has two more on the way. We, um, we have a base race scenario here between the two players. And, you know, I think uh, I Am So Cool is going to win it as he has the gateways all the way over here on. on the Clara side of the map. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think so too. And I actually really like the way like if this was a scenario that was a little, little bit closer, I think, 
where like they had like roughly even zealot counts. The way this pylon is placed down here, like that's so hard to get to. Like even if you destroyed those two gate, those proxy gates, like this is just I I I don't know, man. And I mean, oh, is that? I think that was yeah. I think that was it, right? GG. I guess so. I mean, it's it's weird that nobody left the game, but the game, the replay is over. So um, yeah. Oh. I guess, you know, it's probably because the person who left, I don't even know what happened. Did <laughs> Is this telling me that somebody alt f forward? Is that what this is? Or is it just I, that I Mithar hosted and he left? I haven't had this experience before. I've never seen a replay where it like the, the, the game just ended and nobody like it said nobody left the game if anybody in chat knows what that yeah about, zesky is you know, saying that he thinks it's because niklar hosted and he left um and because he won the series maybe it doesn't show for some reason that he left um which i find very yeah, peculiar right. but either way uh i am so cool is definitely going to take this one um you know he's got the zealot count he's got the building count there's just no way for niklar to bring back this one so Quick series, I gotta say. Um, so how do I yeah. edit this graphic so that it shows? Let's see. My way. I, I don't think I can do it without redoing everything. Let's let's just redo everything. We'll do. I think uh, we got Persian for two o. I think Boyo two o. It was 2-1 for launch. 2-1 for Naklar. And the Striker Dog Lived series, I gotta remember uh, what that score was at the end here. Let me look it up. If I reset my graphic. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I remember catching those... Uh... Or casting those the last time I was here. No, yeah, you only casted the last series, which was Martin B and Launch with me. Um, but uh, if I remember correctly, Striker two, it was two O for Dog uh, Striker versus Dog Lips, which yes, I'm correct. So Striker two O. So for tier one, that means that Crimea Reaver would take it over uh, Fighting Irish three series to two. Um, generally you know pretty close series i think i think there's definitely some uh some room for improvement with with some of the players and their builds and you know i i know myself my games were casted today actually um by Nablime and zesky and i i i my builds were horrible they were trash so i know the feeling of uh <laughs> needing improvement absolutely so um but I mean, it yeah, was a I fun series to cast. Yeah, that was a great, uh, that was a great PVP to actually cast. I, like, I, I really like the fact that I'm so cool actually threw in that, that proxy two gate in the series. Like, I know, like, at least for myself and like people like myself, uh, I would rather just play into like a macro game. I wouldn't want to risk it doing like a proxy gate. Of some sort but you know to, to throw that out there and to try to get i mean as far as it looked the, the nacklar looked like they had everything they needed to hold it because they went to gate themselves but unfortunately they just those were some really well hidden gates so. yeah they did not see the gates and they left their base um unfortunately to do some pressure and you know it's it was i'm so cool just snuck in right behind and and did a great job uh you know i personally would never have focused the pylon like that i would have gone directly for probes but clearly what do i know because he knocked that pylon down and then he took the zealot lead and there was just no coming back from there um but very interesting series i mean you know it it's it's interesting for me to see the different tier ones that are in the field and and uh where their skill levels are and you know some of them are just as tenacious as could be and some of them are a little bit uh quick to leave a game or gg out um so lots of personalities in cpl uh 
this has definitely been fun with my first cast and it was a pleasure to have you as well fridge we'll have to set up another time for us to do maybe a couple of more series yeah i i agree and hopefully this time around i find a better chair to sit in <laughs> yeah well yeah. i always prep my coffee before so that i can get a little you know i'm pretty monotone myself so i can get a little bit of pep in my step yeah man zesky he should have been in here i i invited zesky he didn't want to join us you know he he had already casted with his other fellow aussie and you know us americans fridge you know how he is zesky you know he's he's a a very strict guy he likes to see things the way that they are so you know i was busy he says yeah too sure, busy for us. Right. Uh -huh. we, we know what that means yeah yeah <laughs> He's busy getting right. blasted. I think he was playing his CPL game, so we can't spoil too much. But, well, I think that's, oh, uh, that yeah, that's it for me, Fridge. you have any final thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that does it for me. I think we should, yeah, we should just wrap it up, right? Yeah, we'll just wrap it up so that, uh, you know, Dada doesn't DM me later about uh, extending it out too long. Uh, you know, I've right. seen I've seen some messages from him already, so, you know, he's a... Uh, He's a strict one as well. So, all righty, guys. Well, I appreciate everybody tuning in. And, um, you know, everybody who isn't signed up for CPL, you should go sign up for it uh, right now and at least get in the system. And then next season, uh, you can sign up and hopefully get on a, a team and learn how to play some Brood War. Um, for me, that's the end. I'll, uh, I'll figure out the next series and set up another date. Take care, guys. Bye-bye, guys.